Hello, um, welcome back to my recordings of the readings from the projection of the astral body by Sylvan Muldoon and Harrowood Carrington. Okay, um, thank you very much for joining me once again. Um, we're continuing on page 170, which begins on chapter 9, the factors which stimulate the subconscious will to action. We have spoken of individuals projecting spontaneously and have stated that a certain type, the nervous type, often does so, but this is not because of their adaptable temperament alone. The subconscious will must first decide to move the body, for otherwise even the subject of nervous temperament will not project. Recall the fundamental law of astral projection. When the subconscious will becomes possessed of the idea to move the body, coinciding bodies and the physical body is incapacitated the subconscious will moves the astral body out of the physical of course it is no trick to cause the subconscious will to move the coinciding bodies when we are fully conscious and are capable of moving we do this every day all we need to do is to suggest to ourselves that we walk and the subconscious will will keep us walking until it receives further instructions the subconscious will Therefore, is not so mysterious after all. We are using it every day. How can this subconscious will be induced to move the astral body when we are asleep? This is the important question, and I will show presently how it is done. But first let us do a little reasoning. If the factors which stimulate the subconscious will to action unintentionally can be discovered, cannot these same factors be put to work intentionally and produce the same effect? Of course they can. M. Flamorian once said, There are two methods of investigation in all scientific problems, that of observation and that of experiment, and that is exactly how the present writer acquired his knowledge of astral projection. Be careful sorry, by careful observation, analysis and experiment, during conscious, unintentional projections, I have been enabled to determine those factors which arouse the subconscious will. First, I shall en enumerate these factors, next explain them and then show how to put them into use, for the purpose of producing projection of the astral body. A. Dreams. Sub 1. Aviation type. Sub 2. Dreams which arouse desire and habit. B. Desire. To possess or do something. Not a necessity. Sub 1. Intense desire. 2. Suppressed desire. C. Bodily desires. Necessities. Sub 1. Hunger. Sub 2. Thirst. Sub 3. Enervation. A lack of cosmic energy. And subject D. Habit. Sub 1, long-standing habit, sub 2, routine, sub 3, desirable habit, and 4, broken habit. Some of the factors listed are not as strong as others, and you will learn soon. We have already discussed the first group, dreams, and have seen how the subconscious will is activated by them, and have also learned how to use dreams to promote projection. Next, we shall discuss groups B, C, and D. The subconscious will does not constitute the entire realm of the subconscious mind. The latter is so vast that it can work within itself, so to speak. The subconscious mind can suggest some action to the subconscious will, as it does during sleep. If one of the factors which I have listed happens to come to the surface, or is strong enough to remain at the surface of the subconscious mind during sleep, that is, suggestion to the subconscious will to move the body when we are asleep, comes from the subconscious mind just as the suggestion to move the body, when we are awake, comes from the conscious mind. It is the same will that moves the body regardless of the source of mind from which it takes the suggestion. The only reason why the astral moves out of the physical in the former case while we sleep, and not in the latter case while we are awake, is simply... Because the physical counterpart is incapacitated in the former state, so far as the suggestion is concerned, the subconscious will responds as readily to subconscious suggestion as it does to conscious suggestion. 
We can readily see that the prime requisite is to impress one of these activating factors so strongly upon the subconscious mind that the mind will retain the impression during sleep. This can be done by way of the conscious mind, by repeated action, as in routine, or suggestion, as in desire, or in some cases by combining both action and suggestion. When we impress one of these activating factors upon the subconscious mind, there are often there often occurs an unintentional projection while the subject sleeps. Here is the explanation. Perhaps you have formed the habit of going to a certain place. You persist in this habit and in doing so you impress it upon the subconscious mind. Now if this impression becomes strong enough and comes to the surface during sleep, the subconscious mind suggests that you repeat the action and the subconscious will is imbued with the suggestion. Other factors being favourable, temperament, inactivity of the physical body, etc., projection of the astral body will result. Students have said that there is a spontaneous projection of the astral body, yet there is always some underlying cause. The reason it is called spontaneous is merely because these causes intervened and conditions favourable to the projection were brought about unknowingly. Ordinary habit and ordinary desire, although they will sometimes bring about projection in the proper temperament, will as a, ro as a rule not impress the subconscious mind so strongly. Intense desire and long-standing habit, as you can see, will make a stronger impression upon the subconscious mind and, them for, and therefore more positive.